So today we're going to cover the components of the blood as well as the mechanisms of blood clotting and these both fit under the broad topic of blood in the IGCSC syllabus. So firstly, the components of the blood. First of all, we have the red blood cells and these will transport oxygen using the hemoglobin in them. And then we have the white blood cells which are involved in the body's immune response. Now there are two types of white blood cells. You have the lymphocytes which are involved in the production of antibodies. And then you have the phagocytes, which are involved in phagocytosis. And these two processes will be explained in a little further depth in the topic of immunity. So yeah, this video might not go into much depth about that. And then you have the blood plasma, which transports blood cells, ions, soluble nutrients, hormones, and waste like CO2. And then you got the little cell fragments, which are called platelets, and these are involved in the blood clotting process. Now, although this is not specifically in the blood topic, but it is required to know for IGCSE, so I thought I would cover it here. So red blood cells have hemoglobin in them, and these will bind to oxygen and help to transport it around the body. And it also has no nucleus, which means that the volume available for all of the hemoglobin can be maximized, and this serves the purpose of transporting more and more oxygen. And also, it has a biconcave shape, which will increase the surface area available for the oxygen to bind to. Again, this serves the purpose of increasing the amount of oxygen that can be transported. For the syllabus, you also have to be able to identify lymphocytes, phagocytes, and red blood cells on a diagram like this. So, the lymphocyte would be something like this. It would have a really large nucleus that would take up most of the cell. Well, a phagocyte will have a lot more cytoplasm. And then you got the red blood cells, and you can clearly see that there's no nucleus in them, which is why they're red blood cells. And you can kind of see the biconcave shape. This kind of looks like a biconcave shape from like a bird eye view. Now we're on to blood clotting. So this is a damaged vessel, and this is the red blood cells trying to go out of it. And then this is what happens when a blood clots. So what actually goes down there? We got the platelets sticking to the cut edges of the blood vessel. And then they will release chemicals to attract even more platelets, and this will form a platelet plug. And it would just be this diagram, but without all of the fibrin. And then soluble fibrinogen will be converted into insoluble fibrin, and it will stick to the platelet plug in order to form a mesh over it. And this will trap all the red blood cells inside. Why do we need the blood to clot? And the first reason is so that we can prevent too much blood loss, which can actually kill us. Although most of the time, you, when you scrape your knee or something, it's not a lot of blood loss. But if you imagine if that is not clotted, then your blood will keep leaking out, which can actually also be fatal too. And it's also to prevent pathogens from entering the body and causing diseases. So it acts as a barrier to stop the pathogens from entering. So now I want to summarize the video. Uh, so the blood consists of red blood cells, white blood cells, plasma, and platelets. The red blood cells will contain hemoglobin, and the hemoglobin can bind to oxygen in order to transport it. The red blood cells have a biconcave shape so that they can maximize the surface area available for the oxygen to attach to. They also lack a nucleus, which means that they have more volume for the hemoglobin inside of them, so more oxygen can be transported. There are two types of white blood cells, and these are lymphocytes and phagocytes. The lymphocytes will produce antibodies. The phagocytes are involved in phagocytosis. The platelets have a role in blood clotting, and they're just little cell fragments. And the plasma has the role of transporting blood cells, ions, soluble nutrients, hormones, and wastes like carbon dioxide. And this will be a summary for blood clotting. So when a vessel is damaged, platelets will stick to the cut edges or the damaged edges. The platelets will release some chemicals in order to attract more platelets to that cut edge, and this will form a platelet plug. Soluble fibrinogen is then converted into insoluble fibrin. Fibrinogen is like a plasma protein, and so is fibrin. The only difference is that one's soluble and the other is insoluble. And then insoluble fibrin will form a mesh or like a net over the platelet plug so that all the red blood cells are trapped inside the blood vessel. 
Blood clotting is absolutely necessary so that we can prevent blood loss and prevent pathogens from entering the body. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it has been helpful. If it has been, then please leave a like. If you have any suggestions, then feel free to leave them in the comments and subscribe for more. Thank you. Bye.